Namaste. Welcome back. Here we are out on that little sandbar. That tunnel is finished. It connects back to the main base over there. You can see, if you look there at the top, we've got some new uh, outlines of new levels on there. Unfortunately, I believe that caused a problem that facilitated the the uh, importance of this particular project, and that is the uh, villagers in the breeder system are all gone. And I expect that is due to a baby zombie spawning on that structure and getting into the villager on the top with the six doors and also the, the uh, little farm, the breeder area itself. So here's the tunnel. All those guys are gone. I was left with just one villager, one li uh, librarian. My um, Let's see, which enchantment did he have? A sharpness for book trade librarian who was tucked safely away. And uh, so what we're going to build out on this land is a safe place to keep the villagers. And I also thought, you know, I may as well put the villager breeder in there as well. I originally planned it to not to house the villager breeder uh, but just the villager uh, villagers themselves so it'd be basically be a villager exchange a place to go to trade with villagers uh, but it could easily accommodate the uh, villager trade as well so that's what we're going to do and uh, that means that uh, while the building was designed to house eight villagers, it's only going to house seven or more, I suppose. I could fit more in depending on what happens with those upper levels. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So I'm just going to lay this out. Now that, of course, brings up the issue of impermanence. Hmm, let's see, I got an extra block there. So more than one extra block. There should be a hole there and there and there. Yeah, so the plan is I'll just move villagers in here. Yeah, this didn't go out far enough. It looked like that was a little small. Yeah, we needed to get rid of you anyway. That's a nice way to pick the cactus too, is just place a block next. They need air blocks on all the adjacent spaces. Okay, so villagers will tuck into these little corners, in these little nooks, and also these corners. So that would make space for eight. Uh, but in order to, tr to transport them, we actually need to be able to uh, get in and out of here. And so I thought using a little water lift and a rail system, well, at least initially, after we do that, we don't really need this. So we could close it off and house that eighth villager. So I guess it's okay there. So yeah, the whole idea of impermanence as a, a Buddhist concept, if, if, uh, not other religions as well. I'm just familiar with it from the Buddhist standpoint. So that idea is that uh, everything is impermanent, nothing lasts forever. And so getting bent out of shape when things inevitably go away, like they will, is pointless. So that helped me to deal with that disappearance without uh, getting upset about it. It just is. It's not a big deal. I can always breed more villagers. Okay, so that creates that little pocket. And we just go around like this. So that was the three. One, two, three, four, 
five and one, and one, two, three, and one, two, right? I think that's right. <laughs> we'll see when I get to the other side. One, two, one, two, three. Hmm, maybe not right. Let's see, I did the seven, the three, the two, and then this is the three, so that was right. Uh, that looks a little tight right there. Yep, there's a one, one block gap there. Is this too long? This is too long, that's why it's too narrow there. Okay, good. We have it now, now. So yeah, it's so easy to get worked up. Things don't go exactly the way you want when you lose something that's important to you. And so that also helps me to deal with just this preparing for, for the impermanence of things, preparing mentally, you know? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this looks like I got it laid out. So this is the outline of the first floor. And I believe we have granite floor around, polished granite. So let's just lay that in. Yeah, so knowing that everything is impermanent helps me to put things in context when acquiring things or making things just to know that you know it's not going to last forever it's uh i can remember an example of well it's not really it's closely related to impermanence but it's the I, it's the uh japanese concept of wabi-sabi uh, you know things get to take on a patina, if you will. They'll start to look a certain way because of use. And, you know, when I first got my very first iPhone, I remember, and of course before that, I was pretty anal retentive about keeping things looking, you know, perfectly new. And with my first iPhone, I, I did that same thing. And I learned about the whole idea of wabi-sabi and impermanence and embraced that and you know I, I took the little gel case off my let's see Evo's on let's see if we can sleep I took the gel case off and the screen protector off of it and just you know no we're not gonna be able to sleep that's okay let's just put some torches out And uh, just, you know, embrace the idea that, you know, it's the back is going to get scratches on it. And that's okay. That's just the phone looking the way that it should because of the way that Apple designed it. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not scratch-proof on the back. They, they made the screen pretty, pretty strong and durable and scratch-resistant. So just, you know, let it be. Let it be what it is. And so that's, that's an example of... Like I said, the wabi-sabi concept that's not not exactly impermanence. Well, it's not the impermanence idea. Because the impermanence idea is that the phone is going to go away sometime, at some point, which it did. I broke it. I think that one was one where I dropped it on the tile floor in the restroom at work and set it on the toilet paper holder and booger slipped right off of there and crashed to the floor. Oh, you know what? Uh, so let's put in the, the upper part, the above the floor part of this pattern. And this is telling me I also need to. Well, actually, this. I was thinking I needed to put a step in for these, but I guess I don't. The villager, we can just take out one of these, this block, for instance, and the villager can come up through there. So it's. It's perfectly fine the way it is. Need some torches here. So yeah, the impermanence thing can even help with loss 
of loved ones, you know, because impermanence extends to people too, you know, everyone is going to be gone someday from this planet and this existence, whatever you think happens after, regardless, regardless of that, you know, everyone's going to go and, you know, so you can use that knowledge to change the way that you deal with people. You can appreciate them. Oh, that can't go there because you need a uh, these brown blocks to go there because we're going to tuck a villager in this corner here. And that means we need a post to put the uh, <laughs> gate against. And so we're going to use jungle wood on this build. I think it goes really well with this granite, this polished granite. And the brown stained clay that I've got going here. I'm gonna grab some of this sand to fill in that hole. Oh, you know what? Let's get rid of this carrot while we're at it. Don't need to be carrying that around. Oh, oh that's sandstone. Don't want to waste that. I'm gonna need that for the landscaping. Yeah, I haven't gotten around to landscaping on the base yet. Oh, Ewell's leaving. Bye. Okay, so... Yeah. I'll get around to that eventually. I'm still working on building the structure. You know, it's going to be 14 floors. So, let's see. Those are 7 and 8, I think, that I just put on. So, it's got quite a ways to go. Uh, it'll be good, though. On the other side of that, I don't know if you can make it out. There's just a little edge of, of uh, white there. That's the second cell. I put in an iron farm. And this is the one where I think it's based on Doc M. I didn't actually learn it from Doc M though. I think I saw it on Tango Tech uh, channel on YouTube. I could be wrong. It might have been someone else's based on Tango Tech. I'm not sure. I really I'm going to mention it in a video. I really ought to make notes about it so I can give you good information. Uh, but in any case, it's someone else's design. And so this video that I saw, it had 36 cells in order to maximize spawns of uh, golems. So you basically create little mini villages in each of these cells. And each of those villages spawns golems, multiple golems, if you put uh, villagers in. Hey, little guy. And, uh, yeah, the multiple villagers thing was not something I learned from the video. That's something that one of the other Air Roots members, Zog, clued me into. And that is, if I increase the number of villagers from 10 to, say, double it, which is what I did, and you'll get even more golems spawning per village. And so that is exactly what I did. Look at all these guys. There's a villager waiting to happen. I don't have time to deal with you right now, though. Well, it looks like we missed one here. Okay, so this is going to be glass here, except that these corners, I think I had it like this. And this, I think this is right. So there will be these brown pillars that basically look like the structure of the building. Let's see, I think that's right. Hey, guy. This is going to be... Oh, Ewo's here now, so if all you guys weren't around, I could actually sleep. Oh, wow. You were just far enough away. Okay. When you come out, you'll get burned up. That's cool. I think that's right. So it's the facade that we want. Oh, you're not going to get burned because you have armor. There we go. Alright, so 
I'm gonna lead out this rest of this first floor. And I will come back to you after that. And there we go. It's finished. Yeah, it's been a while. I was actually had a cold recently. She may still be able to hear my voice. So I did a lot of work off camera and here and other places. So let's have an update on this. I got the landscaping done most recently. Let's take a quick spin around here. So the first floor is the villager trading hall. The second one is the incubator. And the top one is the breeder. And the very tip top is where the one, one lone villager sits with his six doors, enticing the ones below to breed. So let's have a look inside, shall we? Here's the Fortune 3 guy. Infinity 1, Silk Touch 1, and Sharpness 4. This is waiting for the Unbreaking 3 that I still haven't been able to get. Smite 5, Fire Aspect 2, and up here is the incubator I was telling you about. Quite a few villagers up here waiting for me to sort them out. Let's see what this librarian has. Flame 1, you die. Okay, that was easy enough. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, so in this chest is where I keep items to trade with these guys as I figure out what they have. Let's put a bucket of water here so we can go up to the next level. And this water column is how I get them. That's how I got villagers uh, up here and and uh, how I transfer them down from the incubator level down to the first level. So here are the four farmers and above here is where the six doors and the one villager are and that's open to the sky. So it works pretty well. The trouble is that it's a tad small. Uh, not, not only is this incubator quite full, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, please move, Squibber. Hey, move. I'd hit you, but I want to keep you because I think you're an armorer or a toolsmith or something valuable. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, I want you out of my way, please. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, little fella. Yeah, you're keeping an eye on me, huh? You must have heard about me and this sword called Slasher. Okay, anyway. Come on, dude. Get out of the way, man. There. Okay. So, there we are. Just need a um, breaking three. And like I was saying, I've got all the main books that I want. Uh, space for all the librarians with the main books that I want down here. Uh, but I don't have room for those toolsmiths and armorers and weaponsmiths and those guys. So, yeah, I don't think this is a good long-term solution for us. It'll work for now. Um, but I think I'll be moving this show back into the base. Which is down here. And actually, let's take a quick tool over to the base. I can update you on the changes that have taken place here. I made this tunnel one deeper. So that when I jump out of the minecart, I wasn't popping my head into the ceiling. And that little darkness problem. I don't remember whether I actually took damage. It made the sound like I was, so I suppose I probably did take a half hour or something like that. The uh, I put this track system in, obviously. And the iron farm is that way. I put track in to lead to that. This level's all open up now because the central shaft, I took it out here and on the next level up, uh, primarily to make room for what's on the next level up. And uh, I also shifted it over. It was over here before, which was in the center of uh, the first, second, first and second floors, which is really the first and second and third since I combined the second and third, but I guess we'll call those second now. Um, 
Yeah, so it was in the center of those instead of the center of the main column of levels. And you may recognize here that all the levels are now complete. There are 14 levels, counting these two as uh, the second and third as uh, two. They're actually combined as far as internal space, so it's uh, could be called one floor. But as originally conceived, this is 14 floors are all there. Let's go up on this hill so you can get a little bit better look at the sky and let's hope no creepers come out to visit so yeah there you go pretty nice all done and uh, the central column now goes up through the center of those and it actually starts at that level what we'll call now the third level where the livestock are currently and i put these water columns back in or let them come back through these levels so they're the primary mechanism for going up to the next level and on this level is a new furnace array you can see the redstone there and here peeking through a uh, really cool system that i think was originally based on tango tango tech or maybe it was mumbo jumbo i think it was tango tech though um, and then this uh, russian gentleman i believe he's russian uh, improved it and so i built his i watched his video which was all in uh, not in english so i had to watch carefully and uh, construct it just uh, following step by step along i'll put a link to that in the description so yeah it's cool you put your fuel in one you put your items to smelt in the other and the smelted items come out in the center chest uh, this light turns on as and stays on as long as there's fuel in the system what I liked about this improvement is that it synchronizes not only the items to smelt, but it synchronizes the fuel as well. So it keeps everything loaded evenly across the furnaces. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat design. It's kind of big. This is actually a smaller version than the one that's in the gentleman's video. This is an eight cell one <laughs> because that's all the space I can have in here. And eight, eight items, eight uh, furnaces in a furnace array. Um, is plenty. Um, he did not have this uh, particular uh, dropper uh, elevator design. That is uh, taken from elsewhere. I've got that on either side. But yeah, this system works out pretty well. It's pretty fast and gets the job done. Let's take a quick jump up to the very tip top level so you can see the view from the top. And let's hope we're not in the center of any clouds when uh, we get up there because that is one of the troubles. I built this with clouds off and with clouds on, they do go through the top levels because this body building is so tall. So let's hop up here and I'll show you what you get with this top view. And you may have noticed I had some trees on the balconies that where there was space for them to grow. And right now the top is not, uh, the ladder, the central column does not go to the ceiling. It just opens into this floor. At some point I may go, have it go all the way in there. But uh, yeah, so here's the, uh, here's what we can see. This is with a render distance of 12, I believe. I, I think the server may be set to a shorter render distance, something like 10. Um, so there's the villager trading place. And that's out the west side. So that's where we, this down on this little hill down here is where we were when we were outside. And then this side is where the cell one of the iron farm and cell two of the iron farm is. And that is one of the next projects. I actually finished a guardian farm and I'm going to show you that in the next video. And then after that, our next project is to build some structure between these two cells so that this thing isn't just floating in space. I like it to look like it's actually, everything that I build to look like it's actually supported. So I came up with a cool design in Creative and uh, yeah, we're gonna build that. It's gonna take a lot of iron and some glowstone. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan. And so I will see you in the next videos. Thanks for watching, namaste.